Hello everybody, it's Grandma. Time for another story from a hometown scrapbook by Ben Weatherwax. Ariel Tweedy. Hello there. We have a scrapbook opened to a special page tonight, a page that tells the story of one of Grays Harbor's first citizens. Not in terms of years of residence here, no, not that, but in terms of years on this earth. Productive effort. The good life and all above a devotion to living that has made him 94 years young and still going strong. His name? Why, it's Ariel Tweedy, master printer, sportsman, great grandfather, and a man whose delicate touch can bring the most exotic flowers to blossom under his care. If I tell you that Ariel Tweedy is a remarkable man, it will only be for the ears of those who haven't had the pleasure of knowing him, because those who know this old-timer have long nurtured a proper respect for his abilities, and at 94 for his keen mind, ready wit, and devouring interest in everything that makes life worth living. But before we tell you the story of the oldest active printer west of the Mississippi, let's have a few words from Dick Crombie and our sponsor. Ariel Tweedy, the man who at 94 operates a commercial printing shop at 2613 Sumner Avenue in Hopium, was born at Three Rivers, Michigan on October 14, 1855. He was raised against the background of the war between the states, but unlike many of his friends whose ambitions were to be a cavalry officer or a cannoneer, Ariel wanted to be a printer. That is, the first real conflict that occurred in his thinking was when he had to decide whether he should be or should not be an apprentice to a printer to learn the trade. Well, his decision seems logical enough today, for at the age of 94, he has outlived many an apprentice whom he taught the trade, and he can still teach many of the and modern printer tricks with the type of composing stick. He has seen the art of printing move ahead over nearly a century of progress, and he's as interested in the new wrinkles of the game today as he was when the first rotary press came into use, or the first Ludlow appeared in a, compo in a composing room. You see, Ariel Twitty enjoyed life. If a man were ever 94 years young, it's he. His voice still has a youthful ring. His eyes have a merry twinkle, and an almost boyish smile flashes across his face when he talks about his favorite subjects. For, for instance, he should tell you about the time he walked into a print shop in Michigan and asked for a job. It was back in the 1860s. The foreman looked me over and asked me if I could spell the word separate, Tweedy recalls. There I stood eager to do anything in order to become an apprentice printer but I couldn't spell separate. I tried and I tried, but it wouldn't go together right. But I didn't give up. No, Tweety recalls he didn't give up. And that's how he got into that ancient and honorable fraternity of printers. He began to spell all of the difficult words that he knew. Finally, the printer gave him one more chance. He unreeled a long world word, the longest that Ariel had ever heard. The boy went to work on it. He coughed, scuttered, tried hard, and then expressed it. Believe me, I succeeded. Well, once he was a printer's devil, Tweedy progressed rapidly as a young printer and a press foreman. He worked at many jobs on many of pioneer papers. At one stage of his life, he made the hard decision to discontinue the printing work for a while, at least, and improve his education. He took some time to make up his mind, but working with others who had a better education than him convinced him that it was the right thing to do. So he made 
the big step. He gave up his job and entered school at a little Michigan town of Schoolcroft. Within a few months, the school burned down, and he had to make the decision all over again. This time, he stuck to his work. Education wasn't easy to come by in those days, he recalls. Teachers were scarce, and there was a shortage of instructors. School had to close anyhow. So he struck, so he stuck to type. Printing in those days was pretty much a traveling occupation. In a few, few years, a typesetter might move around quite a bit. And the list of papers and shops in which Tweedy worked in the Midwest reads like an honor roll of America's early fourth estate. Little Traverse, Centerville, Cadillac, Kalamazoo, Rochester, New York. He was part owner in the Michigan State Democrat in Kalamazoo. When employed in Centerville, he dared to try a three-color advertising poster, an almost unknown product for a small country shop. It can't be done, the head printer told him, but the, con but the county fair wanted a three-color job, and Ariel was willing to try. Experimenting on an old hand press, he succeeded, and the first three-color poster of its kind in that part of Michigan was produced to the surprise of the older printers. It was in October 1878 that Ariel was married to the daughter of a Methodist minister, and they talked about coming west, but it was not for many years yet. In fact, it was in 1908 that the Tweedies moved to Hoquiam. The printer took over as foreman at the Hoquiam Saw Sawyer, a weekly newspaper publication by Lewis J. Mason. Within two years, they had built a home on Sumner Avenue. A son, also Ariel, was following in his father's footsteps as pressman, and Ariel Tweedy, the master printer, began to live the life he had longed for. Printing alone was not Tweedy's only source of satisfaction in his life. He had long nourished a deep, passionate interest in flowers. The horticulturist and floriculturist in him conspired against the routine printer's life and were not satisfied until he left the printing business for a time and constructed and operated a greenhouse on a large scale. It was the first greenhouse built in Hoquim, and if a man had taken pride in his typographic, he now showed a devotion to his growing things. From time to time, he returned to his work as a printer. At one stage, he worked in the printing department of the Grays Harbor Washingtonian. But his longing to work with his flowers finally won out, and he gave up his last printing job, electing to be his own boss when he set type. It was in 1921 that he retired, or what he explained as retirement. He was 66 years of age, not too young for a man to think of stopping his daily labors. He puttered in his greenhouse, known as Gray's Harbor Floral Company, and reveled in his work with the flowers. But there were times, old printers will understand this best, there were times when his fingers itched to feel the lead and the smell of printer's ink. And finally, he built a shop of his own, adjoining his greenhouse, and operated both places together. This was the way a man should live, he thought, and he lived that way to the fullest. It was in the Sumner, Sumner Street home that he raised his family. Three sons and three daughters had been born to Ariel and Mrs. Tweedy. And when the mother died in 1915 and Mr. and Mrs. R. W. R. Johnston went to live with him to help care for his home, Ariel Tweedy had time for everyone. He taught the girls to play piano helped the children with their schoolwork, and had time left for operating his print shop and greenhouse to take in all the town sporting events, singing in a male quartet, and taking part in most amateur shows staged around town. When he was 90, he commented to a newspaper reporter, I sometimes wonder why I should live so long. Someone might have told him that busy men don't die, but they never have time for it. It would certainly apply to Ariel Tweedy. But his explanation was perhaps because he still enjoyed making things grow and not 
an illogical explanation either. As a sports enthusiast, most everyone in the harbor saw him and had been amazed by his active interest. When he was 86, he was a sweepstakes winner in the Aberdeen World's sixth annual football contest. He walked away with first prize, two-thirds, and an honorable mention during ten weeks of contests. He never played football, but he follows the game religiously by radio and newspaper, and he never missed an Aberdeen Hoquiam football game. If you've attended the baseball games last summer at the Olympic Stadium, you might have wondered at the enthusiasm of the elderly fan. If he had questioned him, you might have been surprised to learn that he almost knew every player on the field, and probably most of their fathers. If you've attended the Methodist Church in Hoquiam, you would very likely to see him there. An ardent church worker, in addition to his many other interests, he still actively participates, publishing the church's weekly bulletin in his little shop. Over the years, he has served his church as treasurer and secretary and organist and has sung with the choir. In spite of physical reserves, Ariel Tweedy is still regarded by local printers as a highly capable and efficient hand in the shop. In 1945, he suffered a physical breakdown, which put him on the shelf for a while, and last May he was injured in an automobile accident. These have slowed him up only slightly, and his only complaint is that he cannot be as active as he once was. It was just a year ago, on his 93rd birthday, when his daughter gave an open house for his friends, that he remarked, all of these old folks coming to call makes me feel pretty young. The philosopher says is a state of mind. And so tomorrow Ariel Tweedy becomes 94 years old. It should be the most satisfying one. He has seen the printing profession develop from a handful of type to a business of high speed presses and multiple processes. He has watched Grace Harbor grow from plank roads and wooden buildings into modern progressive cities. He seldom refers to his religion of ours without calling it God's country. His friends say that he is a sentimental man and a very wise one, and we might add a very useful one, and the kind that this Grace Harbor of ours could use more of. So on the occasion of his 94th birthday, let's add our best wishes for many more happy birthdays to the Dean of Western Printers and Hoquiam's most loyal sports fan, Ariel Tweedy. Dick, please say a few words from our sponsor. You know sometimes something dropped usually finds its way into legend or history and becomes pretty permanent without having been meant to be. There was the famous sign that splashed across the concrete counterweight on Aberdeen's Wishkaw Street Bridge when it was first built. After the bridge had finished, someone noted that the big smooth surface was ideal for a welcome sign for people entering the city from the east. So a group of citizens shopped around for a slogan. They considered a half a dozen and finally ended up with, Welcome to Aberdeen! home of the square deal. That suggestion had made, been casually dropped by Wally Bridge, manager of Gray's Harbor Railroad and Light Company. It didn't have much originality. It didn't generate much sympathetic understanding. And in fact, to most travelers who reacted as people do when they meet someone who brags about his honesty, it put them on their guard. I imagine that they put their money on their inside pocket and locked their car doors when they got out. In other words, it didn't have a winning sound. But one of the slogans that was considered was Gateway to the Olympics, a slogan that is used much about Grace Harbor and seems to sound claim and rightful to it. It was back about 1909 when the Harbor Sawyer, that newspaper that Ariel Tweedy worked on, was awarded a contract to prepare and print some country books to advertise the harbor at the fair in Seattle. While this job was being prepared, Tweedy coined the phrase, Gateway to the Olympics, a phrase that has stuck and become a byword of our harbor. 
and if nothing else, is enough to win Ariel Tweedy a page in our hometown scrapbook. Thanks for listening. Thank you.